Welcome back. You're watching us here on Halftime Report. Volatility on the index continues. The Nifty is now down about 100 odd points from uh, the meager highs that we saw a little over 19,300. We've slipped a tad as well. But the important part, Reliance has uh, listed its financial services arm recently. QIA has given Reliance retail a valuation of $100 billion, raising hopes for its listing in line with the trend of India's large conglomerates, seeing a fresh wave of new listings after decades. Nisha Poddar reports. Nisha. That's right. RIL lists its financial services arm a listing from the conglomerate after 17 long years. And it raises expectations for listings of other business verticals, Geo as well as Reliance Retail, especially after the recent announcement of QIA investing in Reliance Retail Ventures, doubling its valuations to $100 billion. So all eyes on August 28th, RIL AGM for any announcement or indication. But it's not reliance alone. Large business houses of India are seeing a new wave of listings after decades. Aditya Birla Group listed Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund in 2021. Piramal Pharma was demerged in 2022. Tata Tech to launch its IPO this year. And GSW Infra is also gearing up for an IPO all after around 15. 15, 20 years coming in as a fresh wave from the last listings of these business houses. So it is the scale as well as the size of the new verticals really kicking in for the large business houses that's really fructifying now. Last fiscal, RIL's retail business, remember, grew 30% in revenues and digital services grew by 20%. And these businesses are, remember, growing at a higher pace than the flagship oil to chemicals business. Now, both have gained some EBITDA with digital at over six and retail over two billion dollars. Now, as both digital and retail gain size, the private equity investors also expect value unlocking in the coming years. So, Geo Platforms, remember, raised over 1.5 lakh crores in 2020 from the investors like Facebook, Google, Qualcomm, and many private equity players, global ones like KKR, RDR, TPG, General Atlantic, amongst the others. And soon after, the same year, Reliance Retail raised close to about 50,000 crore rupees from the investors, many of whom had invested in geo platforms as well, like Silver Lake, KKR, Adia, TPG, amongst the others, and now we see QIA as well. So all eyes on the RIL AGM as the fresh wave of listings from the conglomerates become a trend in India's business houses. Now, to discuss this particular trend further, we have with us Salil Pitle, who's the joint MD and uh, co-CEO of Access Capital. He's going to discuss this with us. Uh, Salil, good to have you on CNBC TV 18. Now, what do you make of this fresh wave of conglomerate listings that we are seeing? Is the acceptance by the market and the investors also higher given the goodwill and sustainability of these business houses this is a uh, it's a welcome move which you're seeing right now i think the big change this time around is that a lot of these businesses which are getting listed either through the ipo route or through a demerger you know automatic listing route are all well, well built out businesses businesses which are all of scale uh, a lot of them are also either market leaders or you know top two or three players in their respective spaces uh, businesses which have got well built out either by capital infused by the conglomerate of the sponsor or in some cases capital which has been infused in by private equity shareholders over long periods of time. So these businesses have got scale. They are, Most of them are you know, profitable. Uh, they're leaders in their respective domains. Uh, so and the risk of you know uh, the growth stage concerns with if any on any of such businesses which are typically concerns for any private uh, public market investor those are very limited over here and then you add on top of that the track record that a lot of these corporates have had the conglomerates have had the value creation that they've done to public shareholders at large you know all of that makes an exciting concoction you know for a lot of public market investors both domestic retail as well as institutional domestic and foreign all of them feel comfortable about you know participating in some of some of these business stories at this point in time.
All right, so trust factor, track record are some of the very important aspects uh, for which the investors really bet their money on the conglomerate-led listings. But what about the foreign investors? Of course, a whole host of them have really uh, shown their interest in Reliance. But what about the foreign investors in other conglomerates? And are they also a beat about the conglomerate listings more? I think a lot of the foreign investors also see this very positively. You know, case-specific people may or may not participate. But, you know, general theme that we get to see from foreign investors is typically foreigners, especially the long-only funds or the large funds, life love to invest in size. Uh, most of these businesses which come from large conglomerates would have already achieved size. They will be, you know, reasonably large cap uh, opportunities when some of the biggest funds can play in, play in them. There'll be reasonable liquidity on the aftermarket. Uh, all of these are parameters from an FII point of view are very strong. Uh, they don't have to worry about governance. Uh, governance standards have been established over periods of time. Groups have uh, huge trust factor built out because they may have had multiple listed entities in their group already. So the, the incoming foreign investor knows that there's a lot at stake, even from the conglomerates point of view. So one can expect the best standards of governance, great track record, size, scale, leadership, all of that available, you know, and the stock will be reasonably liquid going ahead. Uh, an ideal scenario, right? You know, I, I don't have to worry as an investor too much because a, a lot of boxes are ticked over here. All right, Salil, you well mentioned uh, the established corporate governance standards, which is very important, especially for the foreign investor community. So now with Tata Tech really coming up with an IPO, Reliance Retail's hopes have been now heightened after QIA investment. How do you see the IPO pipeline shaping up in the near term? So I won't differentiate the pipeline between, you know, conglomerate run and otherwise. Uh, uh, but I do think that uh, generally from a uh, markets, given the market's buoyancy, the willingness of the markets to accept uh, deal flow properly, we've seen a whole a set of uh, IPOs which are getting done. We just finished the TVS supply chain one today, which got listed. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, so there've been a clutch of good quality IPOs which have hit the market. Some of them have done quite well. Uh, QIPs have been around the place. We have a huge number of block activity that we've seen in the marketplace of late. Uh, the pipeline looks good. There is uh, enough work on the table. We as investment bankers are reasonably busy trying to get a lot of companies ready to uh, be at least ready to face the markets. Uh, some of this, uh, if from a, for, for an IPO, it takes time. So it's not that everybody's ready to launch overnight. Uh, but a lot of people are trying to get there and we would expect some reasonably large ticket IPOs also to hit the markets of the next few months. So fingers crossed, but uh, uh, we will be quite excited. All right, so the IPO pipeline is quite strong and also awaiting many fresh new IPOs coming in from the large conglomerates of India. Thanks so much, Salil. Always a pleasure speaking to you. With that, uh, I'll toss it back to the anchors in the studio. Thanks a lot, Nisha, for that. So that's on Reliance, of course, but we uh, not going to let you